So uh, let's start with coming back a little bit to the ecostructure story. Mark highlighted very well how we frame uh, our interoperability of all of our best-in-class connected products, which you see across the bottom here. These are the relays, the controls, metering and monitoring equipment that Schneider makes, makes lots of and does very, very well with this. These are all intelligent devices. These intelligent devices are connected together. The, connected de the connectedness of these intelligent devices gives us some advantages. The advantages are we can go into the next layer and you'll see the microgrid operation. Microgrid operation in the blue box, this is what's controlling the microgrid. So in this particular site for a commercial industrial building, this microgrid controller manages and optimizes all of those locally collected assets. It takes the power coming off of the PV production, takes the Kohler generator, brings in all the loads, distributes energy out to the loads, interconnects with the building management systems, provides all of the local operation. And it does this in an autonomous way. We aren't relying on the cloud to do that. The microgrid operation is really managing what's going on in this site. And it's doing it in cycles and seconds, lay, uh, seconds kind of decision making. So it's near real time. It's in the cloud where we bring the analytics. And this we'll talk a little bit more about, this microgrid advisor. But that's where we bring in extra data, pieces of our ecostructure where we understand what the weather is, what the tariffs are at a particular time of day, and where we can also bring in choices to work as a grid service operator and bring those commands, load them down into the microgrid operation, and the microgrid operation runs against that plan. If we lose connectivity, that microgrid operation has a forecasted strategy for three days. And it updates it every 15 minutes, so it will run autonomously for three days at its best last known optimal case. So moving on, what we see here is what is going on in the microgrid here in Boston One Campus. And it's not all microgrids have to do these sort of things, but this is what we've done in this particular site. First step we have, normal grid connection. So we work with the grid, we bring power in from the grid, we get most of our power from the grid, and we supplement that power from the grid with the PV production that's done locally. This is a normal operating case, this is the situation we're in right now. And, I, and because of the weather, you can understand that we're gonna have almost all of our uh, energy access coming from the grid at this moment. Then what happens, you go into a utility outage and if a utility is dropped or you make a decision to drop the utility or to island for your own purposes, either it's planned or unplanned, that's a shutdown of the building. So we have an open transition, the building will shut down, will go dark, the entire building. At that point, we begin to spin up generation, we get the generation going in an islanded mode, from the islanded mode, we click back on to the generator, the generator picks up the load and follows the load, and then following after the generation is on, the PV production follows the generation locally and begins to, we begin to reduce the fuel consumption of the local generation during that period based on the PV picking up as much of the load as it's possibly able to do. This is the aut running autonomous state. A portion of this site is operating, not the entire building because we don't have enough generating assets so we can scale up as we go, but today we only have enough generating assets to cover on a peak and a, on a very peak demand of about two thirds of the building. And typically if the PV is, is uh, still in its uh, developing stages of, of low production, either early in the morning or we have cloudy environment, we can cover about a third of the building with our local uh, gas fire generation. When the grid comes back, and that means utility is online, we have monitoring systems that know, we observe it, we watch it, it looks stable, we believe in the grid's going to be able to pick us up, we shut down again, we switch over and we connect back up to the utility grid, the utility grid picks up all of the load, and then the PV after a, uh, after a few minutes will begin to supplement energy again and we're back to the original grid tie condition. So what we're gonna show here really quick and you can watch this and try to follow with me because it's a short little video. It's a real, these are real video images as we did the commissioning, islanding, and reconnection process in our microgrid here. 
Okay? We're not going to actually make you do it live because it takes too long and we'll make, make things dark and we don't want to do that, do that uh, at this particular point. But you'll see this in this next slide. So first of all, we're going through the normal to utility outs, outage and island mode. We're currently in utility operation. Grid uh, is supporting it as well as the PV. Now we've just gone dark. There's no production. We've turned back on. The generator's coming up to speed. Generator begins to produce. We bring the loads onto the generator. Generator's continuing to carry the loads. PV will kick on. So here we come into production of the management of the, of the site. The PV is kicked on. Now we manage how many loads can be operating against the current production of this location. Short, as this is running, and eventually what will happen is the grid will come back. Grid comes back. We see that the grid is alive. We trust in the grid. We begin to turn off the site. Everything goes dark again. The grid returns. We connect to the grid. Grid picks up the load. The load's running. And then PV will start to produce again, tied to the grid. So this is actually how these are actual shots, screenshots from our display control for the microgrid as we were con conditioning this particular site. All of this is accelerated because obviously we were doing tests and checking loads and other things. But this is real live what has occurred in our location here. All right, to manage all of that and to do this optimally, we have a product and we're launching this product called the Microgrid Advisor. We've had this product, we've been evolving it and developing, but this Microgrid Advisor basically gives you the capability, it's a cloud-based software package that, that you can access for customers can access, stakeholders can access, owner operators can access, and they can look at how the particular site is operating with the assets that are being managed, the distributed energy resources, and the local consumption. So they can see in one glass of pane how the energy is being used in this location. And you'll see some more of that out here on the tour. You have tariff management, so you bring in tariff data. We can move and shift uh, optimization, economic optimization of when to bring up generating assets or when to do battery storage solution and shift energy over time. We also have ability to manage down the peak demand and so that you actually store energy at low, at, at low production or, or low consumption points. And then when you are going to maybe push your demand charge up, you bring the battery in and you keep the demand charge down. So you never go over the current state demand and actually can start to manage your demand charges, which can be a large portion of your electric bill. And then we have, beyond that, self-consumption and island mode. And these can be uh, cases where we observe that there's a storm coming, not, not just rain, but an actual storm. And we can decide not to char discharge the battery, hold the battery, keep it there for resiliency and wait for the storm to clear and if it does if it does come through have the battery there to continue to support the site in the case of you know, in, in the case of an event occurring and the loss of power so we have all of these advanced forecasting functions in this particular tool one of the examples for instance here we have a peak demand so these are peak demand this is the tariff management instead of us carrying and, and running as much energy during peak charge times we shift that and bring battery in. So you'll see the black line on the top would be the forecasted or actual consumed total energy of the site. The actual total energy actually consumed by the site is the blue line because we supplement with PV and bring battery on to actually drive down the, peak, the uh, time of use charges on high tariff. Then we have demand management where we effectively do the same thing. We take and charge the battery and, and off-peak times and in low, in low consumption times, bring the battery on and control the peak down so that you don't set a new high peak, causing your charges to increase. Storm hardening, we use our software. We have an, a service uh, inside of Schneider for storm management, and we can observe where storms are occurring. So when we observe, we observe that there's a storm event arriving in the area, we can make decisions and forecast those decisions out so that we drive down the risk in the site and keep the battery fully charged or charge the battery as needed to ensure that we have some extended resiliency on site to ride through a storm event. And finally, before we head out on the tour, we want to talk about this, which is our Schneider Electric Energy Control Center because you've seen Schneider products, you see boxes, you see square D labels, you see all of our, our control systems in the form of our PLCs all over the place. 
This is a new solution for us in a commercial industrial setting where we integrate all of the power equipment, the power distribution, the loads, all are distributed out through this piece of equipment. Production comes into the equipment. We mix and manage production from utility, from local generation sources, from, from the, from the uh, system controls. We tie in the, 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 the uh, microgrid advisor commands into the system. And in a single entity control system, energy control center, are able to manage the dispatch of the utilities, uh, energy, local generation, and load in a single uh, 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 unique system. Very, very important for us to be able to sell and to deliver microgrids that aren't engineered and created on sites. So we can produce this in a factory. We can bring it on site according to the prescription of how the microgrid needs to operate, drop it in place, and do this in a brownfield situation. I am a resident here in the Boston One campus, and I can tell you that it's been a big concern while we were putting the microgrid in here because we were actually a working R&D center while we were introducing the microgrid, and there's a lot of risk, and it takes a lot of creative engineers on site to stop things from really being difficult while you're trying to do a microgrid on site in an operating situation. This can simplify that dramatically. Thank you.